Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Podcast. Seven and two run over the last two nights. Let's keep it going. Quick look at how we did here on Monday. Really good with Brooke Lopez twice there. We hit the half a unit on the really good odds on DK for him to go under 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Then we had Brooke to also go under 23 and a half points, rebounds, and assists with a full unit at minus 130. Really loved picking up the juice there. He made us sweat a little bit. He hit some threes. He had a layup at the end, but we came through. Daniel Gafford was a third quarter cash, baby. He had six in the second quarter after zero rebounds to start the game. If you were following along, he uh, gave way to Kuzma, who had like six rebounds in the first quarter. In fact, was the only person to get a rebound outside of uh, on the starters in the first quarter. One other rebound by a, a bench player that came at the end of the first quarter. So that was a wild start. Then he came in Gafford in the second quarter and got those six boards uh, and then he got the uh, the nine there for us at, to, to close it out. Middleton was brutal. I wish I had given you the rebounds with the assists. I gave it out on a different show that way and changed it for this one like an asshole. And I apologize. That's why I feel bad. I'm not going to apologize that often for this. We're long term, obviously, game. So like it's not that big a deal, but he got a bullshit ass assist with uh, uh, Pat Connaughton there at the end where Pat was open on the corner. They were already down like 13, lost that game to the Jazz. Problems in Milwaukee. Maybe it's just a middle of the season sort of issue, but we'll see. Monday's totals were three and one with a plus 1.3 unit profit there. So we feel good about that. Looking at the season totals here, now 104 and 77, 10.6 units, but really climbing the uh, props total ladder there, 92 and 61, 18.4 units on the play of props now. So we're staying hot with those. I've got five plays on a five-game slate. I don't love it. I don't love the slate at all, but I like some of these picks, and I've got half a unit or 0.3 units on some stuff. So we've got a total of about 4.2 units that we're betting on these five bets that I'm bringing you. First one you can see here is Paolo Banquero. And you know that we just went over with him and love that game against Atlanta. This is not Atlanta. This is him playing Minnesota. So we're going under 34 and a half points and assists in this one. Minus 120 with a full unit. And I'm also going to um, same game parlay that with the money line for Minnesota. I think Minnesota is going to win this game with a depleted Orlando team. That's not going to have uh, Wendell Carter Jr. They're not going to have a bunch of other guys as well. Jonathan Isaac uh, and more injuries as well. So it's going to be Goga Batadze and Paolo Banquero responsible for getting the rebounds in this one. And that's why uh, I don't like to take the rebounds, but I do like the points and assists under for him because these are a bit inflated versus a really good defense. He's gone bonkers without Franz Wagner. And that's what this is predicated on. Franz Wagner's not playing a bunch of other injuries as well for this team. So he is going to be the focal point just as much as he has in the last couple games without Franz. But this is Minnesota. This isn't Atlanta. And this isn't a depleted, not depleted, but very tired Denver defense on the second leg of a back-to-back -back when they surprised Denver at home and won that game. Uh, but they, th this Minnesota team limits power forwards to the second fewest points per game, the second fewest assists per game. They just don't give it up from anywhere. Uh, and, and even against small forwards, the fewest, six, like six fewest points per game, right? Just slightly worse. So however you want to put him and categorize Paolo in this game where... He's a point forward. He's point everything. Like, honestly, he's more like Luca than anybody in terms of what he's trying to do with this team when it's just him and sort of the, the band of merry men that he that they cobble together out there in Orlando. Uh, but all that said, like, there's not that much around him to help him get the assists, right? So even though Luca's out there throwing, trying to throw dimes the way that Paolo's going to be thrown to the corners, thrown to the wings if he drives and they collapse on him, which I expect them to going to be difficult to, to find shooters that are going to make shots against this Minnesota defense, which is incredible. Last game, by the way, if you were following along and tried to take the 25, five and five, I was very curious to see how many potential assists he had on the four that he gave out 12, 12 potential assists and only ended up with four. Like I tell you guys, we normally look at 50 to 55% of the potential assists turning into assists with normal teams. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. Sometimes it's obviously a bunch lower, but that's a really, really low slip, uh, assist percentage. Just one third of the passes that should have been, that could have been a uh, potential assist for him turned into non-assist because there's no shooters. There's really nobody else on offense that you feel confident in once he passes them the ball. So we're going with a little 1.2 units total here split between the under and the under with the Minnesota money line. Second bet, Emmanuel quickly, my boy, I, it's, it, it doesn't even really pain me as a Knicks fan to watch him succeed because we all knew that he was good and we wanted him to be good. And so the trade was a little bit of like, you know, the uh, sort of the movie, the Hendersons, I believe, right, with John Lithgow when they have to tell the beast, like, get out of here. We don't love you anymore because it's for his own good. 
That's how we were with Emmanuel quickly. Over 22 and a half points and assists, minus 110 on points bet. Don't love points bet as a book, by the way. Uh, but I will say that if, if they're giving you minus 110 versus minus 115 or minus 120 on other books, I'm going to take it since I have the count there. Uh, so the reason that we're going over with Emmanuel is because this should be a little bit higher. And it is 23 and a half in some places, by the way. But this is great juice for 22 and a half. That's why I'm, I'm shouting out points book on it. Uh, points bet, excuse me. I don't know if I kept saying points book. He shot poorly versus Golden State, which is wonderful for us because that's why his props kind of come down a bit. They kept rising right up to about 19 and a half points versus Golden State. And he had a very poor shooting night, but still a ton of assists. That's why I like adding the assists in here because he had 10 assists in that game and he's had 16 potential assists per game since coming to this team. Love that for him because it shows that he's not just the score first point guard that needs to be like a microwave score coming off the bench, which us Knicks fans once again knew. We knew that he could be a legit point guard, but maybe there just wasn't room for him on the Knicks to be able to do that with Jalen Brunson there. Either way, he's a really good spot in a really good spot versus this Lakers squad where we talk about all the time. D'Lo's in this game uh, and Rui is out of this game. Gabe Vincent is out of this game. So we're talking about Emmanuel quickly going up against the, the head of the defense against him is D'Angelo Russell. Love that, right? And so we always target these really athletic point guards who can shoot because also the last four games for LA, allowing 44% from deep to their opponents. Um, and that's been versus some three-point shooting teams, but not really even others, even against the Clippers, giving up too, too high of a percentage from deep without the their best players really being three-point shooters. I mean, James Harden, and Paul George, but moving past that, they are allowing 25 and a half points per game to opposing point guards alongside 10 assists per game over their last 10 are the, the Lakers. So that, that gives you, or, uh, yeah, over the last 10, that gives you a good indication of how bad they are at defending that position. And they don't really have any res uh, like um, help coming basically in the way of point guard defense tonight, especially without Gabe Vincent. So sort of correlated here, I'm taking Scotty Barnes unders. It's a little bit scary because Jakob Pertl isn't in. And that's my last bullet point there, but I still am going to take it for 0.7 units. Please look at the unit sizes because that does indicate whether or not like the level of confidence that I have in the bet. So the 0.7 units indicates not my favorite bet, but I do like it enough to play. I wanted to give at least five in this one. I don't love the slate, like I said, but you'll see the unit sizes dwindle as we move down from three to four to five. Under 14 and a half rebounds and assists. I would take just the assist, but it's at it's at five and a half. He's averaging averaging that in the last four since the trade. I don't trust it fully. I do think Pirtle being out is more reason for him to not get more assists, but it could be that he finds shooters uh, and that you know he's finding quickly in the spot up or what have you. Guys like Gary Trent don't really want to deal with that. So we're going uh, under with the rebounds and assists, which he's done in all four since the trade for quickly and company, which. Robert, uh, Robert, RJ Barrett. I called him Robert Barrett, RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly 7.8 ass potential assists in that time frame. Like I said, the five and a half assists, he can get it. He's a really good passer. He can keep the ball moving on the second and third pass. It's not like if he's not ball handling and running the point, like he was a lot uh, before this trade that he can't get assists. He can, however, the potential assists are much lower and I don't think they're going to go up without Pirtle. So I think it'll probably hover around the same. And I'm, so I'm happy to keep it at about five assists that you would expect from him, which means he would need about 10 boards. And I don't think he's going to get 10 boards. He's had eight rebound chances on just in three and a half boards in the last uh, four games since the trade. That's a big deal to me. That means he, I still don't think he really knows where he fits into this offense. If anything, Pascal knows exactly where he fits in now. And, uh, as, uh, RJ and Emmanuel quickly have seemed to have found their stride as well with how they're going to impact the team. I don't like taking the points because I think part of the reason he hasn't been getting some po points quite as much is because uh, RJ was just been shooting way above his pay grade. I expect that to come down at some point and Scotty to probably be taking a few more shots as a result of that. So I think shots might be there a bit more and the rebounds and assist chances will continue to be not available to him even though Pirtle's out. So the eight and a half boards, they're very high. It's just, it's because Pirtle's out. Lakers, still a very good rebounding team for the most part. With AD and LeBron out there, they're much better, obviously. And they're both going to be out there. Scotty does have slightly inflated stats against this uh, in this game because in the last two that he's played the Lakers, he's gone pretty comfortably over these numbers. He had nine boards in one of them, which helped a lot. However, in both and both of those games at least one of lebron or ad didn't play and they looked way different by the way dennis schroeder was playing in one of those games so this it's not the very it's not like really heavily uh it's not a solid use case for us to use and move forward with in this game so that's why we're taking the under 15 rebounds and assists for him come with me if you dare on a luca under eight and a half assists this was at nine and a half literally right before i 
finish the graphic. <laughs> so just to let you know, like this has been bet down because the under nine and a half was at like minus 140. And I was willing to take that. I loved under nine and a half for Luca with Kyrie playing and without Derek Lively playing. It's at eight and a half. I went down from half a unit that I was going to play to 0.3 units. And we still make, you know, 0.3 ish, three and a half, whatever back on our money if this does hit. So I, I'm not going crazy on it. I'm just going to put the few units on it. Units are important because I don't, at the end of the day, I don't care about my record at all if I have plus money, right? Like I obviously want to win as many as I can, but part of the record looking the way it is at times as you go for bets that are a little bit less likely, plus 110 tells you that like this is a little bit less likely than it is to go over. So no Derek Lively matters because he has almost two full assists fewer in the games without Derek Lively this season than when he plays with him. There's very few guys that can impact Luca's numbers with or without him. But like if they're on or off the court, right? Derek Lively and rim running centers are one of those players. And Kyrie Irving is going to be the other player. Both of them are, or one of them is playing tonight, Kyrie, which hinders Luca's assists. The other one is not playing, which helps Luca's assists, right? So Derek Lively being a rim running center is huge for Luca because when he can has the threat of being able to just throw it near the rim, in addition to having three shooters spotted up on the floor for him once he inevitably gets past whoever is guarding him he is a matchup problem for every single player in the nba so when he does that now he's got three on two four on three what have you if he has a rim running center he's got the option to throw that thing right up and that is huge for keeping the defense sucked in and off of his uh three-point shooters or if they're out on the three-point shooters now he's got that easy lob to the rim you see what i'm saying without that and dwight powell ain't quite it anymore in that sense especially not uh, against memphis which is very good defense down low Tr triple j is going to be a problem he doesn't have to worry about Derek lively at the rim so that's huge triple j can range with a lot more freedom not too worried about guys like dwight powell nearly as much around the rim so that means less assists maybe a few more opportunities for luca to even get all the way to the rim also, we're talking about playing with Kyrie. In the games with Kyrie this season, eight assists per game. Not even, like 7.9. Without him, 11. A little bit more than 11 assists per game without Kyrie. Obviously, right? Kyrie needs the ball in his hands as well. They've done a good enough job of playing off of each other and not necessarily just doing your turn, my turn, and getting some assists for this team, even though they're very much near the bottom still in assists per game. Like, the offense is still not choppy or, or uh, sort of like lack of flow like they can still find open guys and there's a, a clear strategy and sort of a, you know brand if you will to this this offense but he's gone under in six straight because Kyrie's been playing and now we've got a Memphis defense that's really good and they're going to need to tighten up because Jai ain't coming back this year so that means that this defense is going to have to continue to be at the form that it's been for the last four games or so since Marcus Smart came back and started playing with them again after being injured for a while they played at a higher pace with Marcus and they've had uh, Ja in there for one of those games, two of those games. So that's a big part of it, right? Now we're talking about needing defense because there's not, you're not going to be able to match points with Luca and company, especially with Kyrie in this game. Grant Williams is back in this game, so I, I'm going to go under with just 0.3 assists for, uh, uh, just 0.3 units on him to go under eight and a half assists. And the last one is another smaller bet at half a unit for Isaiah Hartenstein. For him to go over 11 and a half boards, I just want a piece of this action because I know he's going to get boards. Do I think he's going to get 12? Half a unit's worth of confidence. I think he's going to get 12. So do what you will with that because that's that's where I've the, the amount of money I've put on this, right? Um, full dis, uh, disclosure, by the way, with the Luca bet, I was telling you how this went down to eight and a half. I have it at under nine and a half. So if you don't play this, I understand because I didn't play it at eight and a half. I played it at nine and a half for half a unit at minus 140, just to be fully uh, open with you guys. So if you don't want to play the eight and a half, I get that. I'm going to uh, put my record down as under nine and a half assists when I get this. For me, if it, you know, if you guys hit the eight and a half and it, it and it doesn't hit, and it, he gets eight, let's say he gets nine assists, we're gonna be pissed. But I, that's why I wanted to give you the full disclosure. All right, Isaiah Hartenstein. I, like I said, I just want a piece of this action over eleven and a half boards, half a unit minus one hundred five. It was at ten and a half, and people bet it up because it's a good bet because DeAndre Ayton ain't playing. And so with DeAndre Ayton, well, I'm sorry, he's still doubtful, but he's almost definitely not playing. We'll find out in about an hour and a half if he's playing or not. Uh, if you want to wait till then, go ahead. But I think this 11 and if, like 11 and a half is already taking into account that DeAndre Ayton is not playing. So the 20 rebound chances that Isaiah Hartenstein has had since this trade, and they've got OG in now, and obviously no Mitch Rob, just indicative of how they're going to play. They're going to play a, a lot more spread offense. That's going to give more opportunity for guys like Randall to work uh, and obviously OG to get out onto the wings. It's a bit more spread offense. They've got a lot more three-pointers that they're relying upon uh, than the Knicks do. And so I didn't really want to get into the points with Isaiah. 
I will say centers are scoring a ton of points against Portland right now, especially without DeAndre Ayton in there. We're looking at them giving up rebounds, points, etc. Although, weirdly enough, their opponent rebounds go down by two per game without DeAndre Ayton this season. That's because they give up even more points and higher field goal percentage to their opponent. There are fewer rebound chances even for him when uh, he's out there because the other team is making more shots. So it's a little bit weirdly correlated, but it, it is why like I'm not the hugest fan of this bet, but I put half a unit on it because I'm getting in on the action of what could be like another 19, 20 rebound game for him. He's had two games right now, 19 rebounds, 20 rebounds. He's averaging the 20 rebound chances, which should be good for 12, to be honest, with a 45% uh, percent uh, defensive rebound percentage like he's getting all of these defensive rebounds right so uh, uh, portland's allowing the six most boards they're allowing like i said the most points per game two centers in the last seven if you want to tack on the points it's at 10 and a half i'm not really scared of it i just wanted a little piece of the action with the points alone or with the rebounds alone because i think he could just continue to be a monster on the boards without a really good center in there for portland to, to box him out so that's all the time i have for you guys took a while to get this one but uh we've got the five bets here six really if you include the double bet there with paulo banquero under 34 and a half points and assists for paulo with a full unit under 34 and a half points and assists plus that minnesota money line plus 150 there for 0.2 units emmanuel quickly over 22 and a half points and assists is minus 110 for a full unit scotty bonds under 14 and a half rebounds and assists minus 128 there uh, i believe i'm putting half a unit on that apollo Apologies for the confusion. This should match uh, 0.7 units rather on that. So 0.7 units on Scotty. The, the best bet summary is a little bit incorrect, but 0.7 units. Luka Doncic under eight and a half. If you are so bold, I put a half a unit under nine and a half assists off for him. And it went down right before I even got this video up. So apologies there. But if you want a little bit of plus money on the 0.3 units for him, I, I'll take the under eight and a half as well with you. Isaiah Hartenstein over 11 and a half rebounds because I want a little piece of that action. Half a unit on the big man to do that. And that is all the time I have for you guys in this one. Hopefully you caught the college basketball video that I have up with Oaks. Oaks has now got his his uh, shows going on the channel. So there's a full playlist with college basketball bets. He's five, four and one rather, up to 0.12 units so far after one video with us. We look to stay hot with him. I know some of you tail, tailing him already. So appreciate you letting us know. Let me know what you think of the bets in the comments, please. I would love to know what you guys are playing here today. We're going to start doing a little bit more community engagement, get some live streams going. I need you guys to subscribe and follow along because that helps and gives me the opportunity to do things like live streams and the like so let's stay hot man seven to two since sunday night and we will look to keep that going before you guys so until i see you next happy betting